Well, good morning guys. It's a beautiful morning here in northern Wisconsin. Uh, I'm planning on doing some bluegill fishing today. It's probably the last weekend we're going to find them on beds. Um, we've just had a unbelievably warm spring. There's a fish. Uh, it's been foggy this morning, so I decided to do a little slip bobbering. And um, been catching some bass, caught a nice crappie. But now the fog's finally burning off so we can go see if we can chase those bluegills on the beds. And uh, what I'm going to be doing is using circle hooks today so that we can have some safe releases on those fish and get them right back to their beds and uh, not have to worry about harming those fish. So I think I got a pretty decent bass on here. Just on a slip bobber and a leech and a weed line waiting for this fog to burn off. Oh yeah. And I'm doing the exact same thing on this uh, slip bobber rig. You see that hook? right in the corner of the mouth every time. These circle hooks are absolutely awesome. When you've got a lot of fish that you plan on releasing, um, they're the way to go because they don't hurt the fish. They don't gut hook them on live bait. And uh, that's what we're gonna be doing today. So the fog's finally burning off here. I think it's time to go catch some bluegills. Alright, I found my first beds here. Didn't take long. Fish on. Got the ultralight here. Look at that. There's a bluegill dinner coming up. Alright, dropped it right in the middle. Fish on. Yeah, this looks like a nice one. Oh yeah, that's what we're after right there. Good eight inch gill, not a giant, but a real nice eater. And see that circle hook? Right in the corner of the mouth there. So we could definitely release this guy. I'm just gonna keep a few eight inchers for dinner, maybe eight or so. So basically to find these bluegills, what I'm doing is I'm using my polarized sunglasses and just running the trolling motor on high looking for those little dick shaped holes and typically they're in groups so you're looking for a little group of discolored bottom something a little bit different okay just found some more beds here these ones don't look huge but i'm not looking to keep huge ones anyway i'm looking to keep like those eight inchers and these look like they're about that size yep exactly what we're looking for right there nice eight inch bluegill that's perfect for the fish fry i don't like to keep the giant ones i like those eight inchers those are perfect get a couple more off of these beds and keep looking there we go perfect that's exactly what i'm looking for nice eight inch bluegill there perfect eater again right in the corner of the mouth that fish I could release very easily with that circle hook but I'm gonna keep about eight of them for dinner here this is number four so four more and we'll uh, we'll just be fishing for fun at that point there we go. another nice eater perfect hook set and I'll go over the hook set in a little bit. It's not even really a hook set, but uh, circle hooks are very unique and we'll go over some of the fine points here in a, in a few minutes. But one thing that I like to do when I'm fishing bluegills on beds is only take a couple fish off each, uh, each group of beds. I don't like to clean out the whole area because those other males will actually guard that whole area if you leave some there and uh, it won't get completely wiped out by the bluegills. So. Um, I usually catch a few and then move on to the next set of beds. All right, I just found a nice group of beds here. They're definitely buried in the bulrushes, but one nice thing about circle hooks is they will go through the bulrushes much better than a J-hook. So you can kind of slither it through those bushes, get it to the fish without getting hung up. There's one. Just 
like that. Ooh, there's a nice one. Oh yeah, perfect eater right there. Well, that's my eight bluegills, so now I'm just gonna go fish for fun. And the beauty of these circle hooks is I can do that without worrying about hurting a bunch of fish. I know I'm gonna hook them in the corner of the mouth and they're not gonna get uh, deep hooked and injured. So I'm gonna keep fishing, see if I can get some really big gills now. All right, I'm hoping you guys can see this bed here. I'm gonna flip this crawler in there, and try and get that bluegill to eat it. Yeah, he ate it. Oh, that's a nice one. That's a nice one. See these right here, these are the gills that I like to catch and release. He's like nine inch, big fat gills, and that's where that circle hook comes in handy. I can just take him right off, perfect hook in the corner of the mouth, and let that fish go. All right guys, I'm gonna catch this fish off his bed, and we'll see how long it actually takes him to get back on it. We'll time it, and I'll prove to you here that it does not take long at all. He's so busy chasing the little guys away, he doesn't even see my worm yet. There we go. Okay, start the timer as soon as I put him in the water. That's a dandy too. Really nice bluegill. Probably a solid nine incher. Hooked in the corner of the mouth with the circle hook. We'll let him go. And he's back on. Just like that, 30 seconds, that fish is back in his bed. Does not take him long at all, so. Um, perfectly safe to catch these fish on circle hooks release them they're gonna make their way back pretty quick all right guys let's talk location this is something I'm gonna start implementing in a lot more of my YouTube videos this is Unicorn Lake and it doesn't actually exist but uh, Horn Dog Maps made this for me we wanted to have a lake that didn't necessarily show you exactly where to fish on a particular lake but it had a lot of different structure elements that we could use to illustrate things so I'm going to be using this for location purposes on a lot more videos but as far as bluegills go the bluegill spawn the first bluegills in this lake are going to spawn right here in this shallow bay maybe in this part of the lake if it's warm but this one's going to warm up the quickest it's the shallowest it's got just a channel going to it that's where you're first going to see those bluegills start to bed. And then as the water temps warm up, they're going to start moving out into the main lake and spawning in that part of the lake. Now, I don't like to look for bluegills way back on shallow flats, like, like back here, or where it's just super shallow. I like to look for them where there's a shelf that comes out like this, um, and there's some bulrushes along there and then it drops off into deeper water or a nice weed bed. So spots like this right here, you know, um, spots like this right here along this bank, um, these banks right here would possibly potentially be good. And typically it's main shore structure that we are finding the bluegills on. I'd stay away from the offshore stuff. Um, they're typically gonna be right on that shoreline. And bluegills will spawn anywhere from about 65 up to 75 degrees. And there tends to be different waves of them that come through. So you may have bluegills spawning in different parts of this lake, like a 4,000 acre lake for up to a month. So sometimes you'll find a, a bunch of fish like this that are really, really not spooky at all. I can just drop it literally right down into his bed and haul them out. I mean, right off the back of the boat. This is why these fish are so vulnerable. They're so easy to catch when they're spawning. So again, circle hooks allow you to catch them release them we'll see how long that one takes to get back to his bed not very long he's back already chasing the little ones away that was maybe 30 seconds so it's pretty safe to catch and release these things with circle hooks they're not gonna lose the nest so um, that's why I use them it's a perfect application for a circle hook catch and release bluegills on beds it's an absolute blast i just wanted to prove to you guys that it can be done safely and effectively so all right guys a couple quick things on my setup here super basic four pound test mono leader on berkeley uh 
Berkeley braid here. This is Nanofill. I think it's uh, eight pound test. A little five foot ultralight and then basically six inches of line from my sinker to my number eight Gamakatsu circle hook. You don't want too much leader between your sinker and your hook or it'll drape over the weeds when you're flipping into those beds. So I just leave a little bit there. So with a typical J hook, if you get a bite, you're gonna tighten up that, that rod and you're, you're gonna lift it, pull back on the fish as you reel down. With the circle hook, what that's gonna do is pull the hook out of the fish's mouth. I don't care what kind of fish you're fishing for, big, small, doesn't matter. What you wanna do with the circle hook and I found this out the hard way. It's hard to, to get the feel for it if you're used to setting the hook. All you want to do when you feel that fish bite is just reel down, just like that. And that's going to pull the hook to the edge of the fish's mouth. It's going to turn it right at the corner and just slide it in. Once you get them hooked, then you can tighten them up and reel down on them, put a bend in the rod so you don't lose that fish. Like I said, that circle hook allows you the flexibility to release the fish if you don't want to keep them keep fishing for those bluegills. Sometimes they can be really finicky on beds and it's tough to catch them on anything but live bait. So that allows you the, the ability to go ahead and catch them and not worry about hurting those fish. This has been a fun morning. Got a nice meal and uh, released a bunch more nice ones. So it was a really, really good time. So I'm glad I got out and hit that last bit of the spawn here. So you guys can still get in on it on these deeper northern lakes. It's still happening. So it, it'll probably go through the early part of July up here.